Meanwhile, back at the secret tunnel. This place is like a maze. Try not to get separated. All right. <laughs> Winry, are you okay? I'm fine. Is that dynamite? Good chance that goes off at some point. We can't take any risks with Kimberly and his men, so first chance you get, take out all three of them. Whoa. Let We're gonna take him out? Episode 41, The Abyss. This is sort of weird for Ed. You're not planning on killing them, are you, Major? Of course we are. No, I'm not gonna have any part of that. I say we should take Kimberly prisoner and try to get some answers. Do you really think he'll tell us anything? He's too dangerous to live. But we don't know that about his men. I mean, for all we know, he could be manipulating them somehow. Forcing them to obey. You could be right, but we can't take such a risk on a possibility. And yet you're still willing to kill them for one. This isn't like it was with General Raven. There might be another way. Have you forgotten the first law of Briggs? The careless are the first to die. You right, show the mercy strong in the this weak. place, and I guarantee it's gonna get you or your friends killed. <laughs> That's the Briggs way. Yeah, Ed has done a really great job so far maintaining his innocence despite all the craziness that's going on around him. But this is sort of weird for him because if he doesn't do anything, he's still complicit because he knows the plan. But I mean, Kimberly is super dangerous. And in fact, I feel like Miles might be underestimating him a little bit. Like, Kimberly's not going to go down easy. Especially if Ed gets in the way. I had almost forgotten that he's just a kid. Indeed he is. Especially if he's naive enough to think he won't have to kill anyone. He's done a good job so far. But once you've lived through a couple of wars like we have, you learn some things. Like sometimes, killing someone isn't as hard as letting them live. The Elric brothers have certainly chosen the more difficult path. They really have, though, in so many I guess ways. they like to go against the grain. Yeah, but in a way, I envy their conviction. Yeah, it's one of the best things about them. And what does this term mean? Aurelian. It's another term for gold. So these notes are centered around immortality and gold. I'm guessing that it's because Mr. Scar's brother was influenced by Xing Yi's alka history whenever he wrote them. And why is that? We refer to an immortal as a Shinito. It means a true being. These true beings are considered to be perfect souls. And since gold is considered the perfect metal, these beings are also sometimes called Aurelian. <laughs> so I think words, I get it. An immortal person is seen as a golden being. In a sense, it comes from the man who brought alchemy Flash to the Hohenheim. The legend says the sage of Xerxes. With golden hair and eyes, and that's where the term first originated. Huh. Hmm. An alchemist with golden hair and golden eyes, huh? Sounds like Ed and Al. Very insightful, Winry. One thing that occurred to me later after watching the last episode, Shingi's alchemy is partly focused on healing, right? Which is something that Hohenheim seems to be very involved with. Like we saw him heal the teacher. And that might end up being something that helps them to defeat Father and save a mistress. Which would be interesting considering that Hohenheim came out of that whole thing but departed from it and seems determined to end it or at least not be a part of it. This is not a fully formed thought yet, but it's like two halves of a whole, right? Because you have Father and you have Hohenheim who both came out of the same event and you have their different sets of alchemy. You have father, which seems to be consumed with power and developing philosopher's stones through the consumption of human souls. And then you have Hohenheim, who is doing sort of the opposite and using his powers to heal people, which led to alchemy, which might actually be the way to defeat father in his version of alchemy. Oh, wow. It's so bright. I was starting to wonder if we'd make it. Yeah, but you're walking right into clear. a trap. For now. Let's head or to danger. before it turns again. We'll walk ahead to stomp down the snow and make a clear path for the rest of you to follow. That's Thank very nice. Much. I'll really turn these guys around. Oh yeah, Al. Speaking of Al. He got stuck. At least he made it in time to warn them. I crossed the mountain to warn you guys. Why would you even risk that? It was the only way to warn you. Warn us? About what? Briggs has been taken over by Armstrong is gone. General Armstrong's gone. They summoned her to central headquarters. You'll be walking right into their hands if you go there. Yeah, where do they go now? What are we supposed to do? Right. We can't just hide in the mines. You can go to Drakma. Well, isn't Mr. Kimberly gonna be suspicious if you just suddenly disappear? It's okay. Don't worry. Brother's got it all taken care of. Does he? Three men in this squad. There are five men in mine, sir. Each squad is ready then. 
Spread out and carefully search your designated sector. Sir. Yes, sir. Let's get going. Yes, sir. Oh no, that was the plan? I didn't even notice him there. reason to call major, sir. It's hard to move around in here. Couldn't you have made this thing lighter? You're strong, you can handle it. Come on, Kimberly's watching. Oh god, brother! I don't know if this guy was the right man for the job. I heard him mention that he couldn't trust the northern soldiers, so he's only taking the men he brought with him, sir. Very smart. I guess he's figured us out then. He figured you out a long time ago. I feel like Kimberly might even attack first. He's the master detective after all. Check the entrance for tracks in the snow. We'll follow them in if you find multiple sets. Yes, sir. Kimberly's about to feel real alive. Yes, sir. He's in my sights. He's just standing there. Something off. Something off about that. It's Edward. What? Hey, Kimberly. You should probably let the Brig soldiers check the tunnels instead. You could get lost in there pretty easily. The mere fact that you're stopping me is proof that we're in the right place. Now I know that they're down there. And how is that? Look, I want to catch Scar. You're trying to buy some time for your snipers <laughs> to get into position. Ooh. Aren't you? you knew about that? I can practically smell the murderous intent in the air around here. It's like a sixth sense I picked up while in Ishval. They're just standing there talking. What should I do? <gasps> can you still He's smelling you. Kimberly? Yes, sir. Then aim carefully and fire. Yes, sir. I'm sure he appreciates the sniper's conviction. Kimberly! Son of a His men. Oh, they're also, what do you call them? Chimeras. Does this mean he's going to track them all the way to that refugee village? Well, Ed didn't have to worry about killing Kimberly. Miles! These guys are Chimeras! And they know how to fight in low visibility! Stay out of here! Trust me! Falling like that's gonna stunt my growth even more. <clears throat> dynamite, huh? Yeah, there's that dynamite again. You idiot! That stuff isn't gonna do you any good. It's too damp. Are you sure about that? Do you happen to know what dynamite's made of? It's nitroglycerin, isn't it? And nitroglycol. <laughs> and there's sawdust. I love how there are all these science lessons in the middle of the battles, but I've learned nothing. What is this, some kind of chemical gas? Yeah. I just got out of the hospital, and I don't feel like getting banged up fighting a youngster like you. Not to mention that I don't really have the time, either. <laughs> I guess I'll have to speed things up with this. At least I won't have to search for it now. He's <laughs> fast. Wow. He's lost his stone, and he can't transmute now. Good job, Ed. And now I'm... Now you've what? You think you've won? <laughs> so you're determined not to kill. How admirable of you. You do realize the advantage that it gives your opponent, though, now, don't you? Instead of finishing me off, you've given me a second chance to kill you. <laughs> right, the second one. That sense of mercy is about to get you in a lot of trouble. That figured something out, though.
or not. <laughs> That doesn't look good. Al? What's wrong? What is happening? Al, Al! Their connection. My body. It's pulling my soul. Al! Al! His soul is being pulled away. Do you know if anything like this has ever happened before, Winry? I don't know. Can you hear me, Alpha? Al! Al! Please wake up! No. Al! Al! What do we do? What do we do? Yeah, what do we do? So we already saw Al's body trying to pull him back, but we know that Ed's body is connected to Al's body. And so is it because he's being weakened right now that this is happening again so soon? That is brutal. That wound. He's still kicking. I won't make her cry. Especially not over something this stupid. Did he just save them in this weakened state? Yeah, no surprise that Kimberly doesn't care about his men. Don't get the wrong idea. I can't pull this out of my stomach on my own. I could use a little bit of help. We were very direct cycles just of goodness. To go, and now you're asking us to save your life. Yeah, basically. Better do it. One by one, Ed and Al are going to convert all these chimeras. You're going to bleed to death pretty quickly once I pull this out. Not if I. Nah, he can it. do it. Yeah. As soon as it's out of me, I'll close up the wound with alchemy. What? Have you ever performed any kind of medical alchemy before? Sort of. I did some research on it when I tried human transmutation. Just some research? Your guts have got to be all messed up. You're going to need a philosopher's stone to make this work. I'm going to have to use my own life force the same way I would use a stone. Huh? <coughs> That's amazing. It'll probably take a few years off my lifespan, though. You're positive. I don't really have time to think about it. Right. Maybe this, this conversation really can what wait. This is showing mercy is gonna cost me. Then I'm gonna have to learn to pay the price, right? <sighs> Damn. Talk about dedication to ideals. Yeah, I'm ready. This I've makes me uncomfortable. Myself as a single mass of energy. <laughs> Use the energy. You're Just a single mass of energy. Yeah. Focus on that. That's it. I'm a philosopher's stone that's powered by a single soul. Remember what it felt like at that moment. Remember how it felt to use souls to harness life. <laughs> The focus is incredible. And the fact that he's philosophizing all this while so injured. But yeah, that can't be good long term. You can't kill me that easily. <laughs> Love the spirit. Well, I wouldn't exactly say that I'm healed. I rejoined my undamaged organs. And I've managed to stop the bleeding. Undamaged organs was the key word there. Hey! I've got to stop Kimberly before he gets to... <laughs> oh man, idiot. There's no way you can fight Kimberly in your condition. Hmm? Oh, the, the one what he discarded. It? Right, it fell. Whoa. The stone, huh? I guess Mr. Kimberly must have lost it. Quit calling that freak Mr. He's not our boss. Not since he almost killed us. 
That's a good point. How about we make our resignation official? When cycles of violence go well. Although I guess it's still a cycle of goodness because Ed saved them. Ed looking pretty good right now compared to Kimberly for these two people. But yeah, hard not to be inspired by that. That was a crazy display from Ed on so many levels. Like he's injured, but he shows mercy. He shows intelligence. He shows deeper thinking and understanding. And he shows just grit. Sheer grit. We do owe him our lives after all. Very true. First things first. We gotta find him a doctor, right? <laughs> awesome. That was such a crazy episode for Ed, but also a really cool clash between him and Kimberly. One of the things I like about their meeting is what Kimberly said about Ed's mercy or his kindness or whatever he, he called it being a weakness, because I think that sort of is how it seems, right? It seems sort of overly idealistic and not practical at all. At first glance, I think Ed's idealism seems like the kind of thing that sounds good in his show or is like a very heroic thing to aspire to, but sort of strikes you as unrealistic or not thinking about actual life and actual danger and actual risk and threat, you know? I think it's way easier to subscribe to the belief that you want to be good, you want to, you know, maintain some kind of ideal personality and, and some ideal morality. However, you also have to think about the world and be very cognizant cognizant of threats and in that light maybe killing people who pose you great risk is acceptable. I think that's where most people might fall. But I think another way to look at it and going a little bit further is that maybe this kind of idealism is the most pragmatic way of looking at things. Because as long as people hold the view I just described about how it's idealism but sort of superseded by pragmatism, that is the system that exists and that is the system that continues to perpetuate. And it's only by having certain ideals starting at the individual level that they start to grow outwards, you hope. And you know, this show is big on cycles and cycles of violence and cycles of goodness. What I think makes Ed special in all this and what makes it more believable for me is that it's not just idealism, it's, it's idealism backed up by action. Like he's shown in this episode that he's fully ready to embrace his death for those ideals and I think like it has to be started in that way like the first people to begin holding these kinds of high ideals and living them they are like almost inevitably going to be sacrifices because other people do not hold those views and will dispense with you like Kimberly is sort of an advantage over Ed because he doesn't hold that idealism at all right he has a different kind of idealism that you know, he'll do whatever he wants, whatever he sees is justified for himself in that moment. And so short term, that will be the reality. But long term, the only way anything ever changes is if people like Ed don't go down that road and do stick to their ideals and understand that that will almost inevitably lead to their own their own sacrifice, at least in some way. So that makes it a little bit more satisfying. It doesn't feel so much like just token hero who like, I'm always going to do what's right. There actually are real stakes for them. There actually are real stakes for the, the good people in this world. And there are sort of no stakes for Kimberly, and that's kind of infuriating. But like, if that's the challenge, what are you going to do about it? You know, like, if that's what it is, then at least you meet it honestly and openly, which is, which is what it seems like Ed is doing. He's not pretending that his idealism will work out great for him. He's doing it on faith that his idealism will make things great for others later eventually. Aside from that, on a more technical note for the show, I'm wondering what this will do for Al. I wonder if there is any connection between what happened to Ed and Al's collapse in the snow. Because we know their bodies are linked, so it seems like that's going to be something that comes up with increasing frequency. So a really action-packed episode. That's the end of 41. I'll see you guys next time for episode 42.